One classic mend is called a porthole mend, and that's when you sew all the way around outside of a hole. Um, sometimes you can use that so you're leaving it so it's, you know, just empty on the inside, and you can see right through to the inside, or sometimes you can put a little piece of fabric to cover it. That's what I'm doing. This is a little piece of jeans fabric. So I'm just pinning that back there just to hold it in place. Now, I could use something like this, a plain thread that would really hide in there, so that would be a slightly more invisible mend, but this time I'm choosing to go with something that's a little bit more visible. This is a variegated sashiko thread. They come in little packages. Um, don't have all the packaging, but this is what I found. 100% cotton. And they just dye it so that each section gets a slightly different color. So it's a repeat. We go from this blue to this blue-green to chartreuse to dark green back to blue again. Now here are the things that I'm going to want to use with it. This is an embroidery needle. So it's got a slightly larger eye. It's also sometimes called cruel needle. Not cruel like mean. C-R-E-W-E-L. Also using something called thread heaven, also called thread magic, also called a bunch of other things, but you can also use beeswax. All this does is something to um, help bond the, th uh, the thread fibers together and make them go through the fabric. If you look right at the end of this, you can see that it's sort of frayed. Several twists of fabric, of fiber, being put together into one long thread. And if I just left it that way, it might be really a problem to thread the needle. So for this, I will take it and put it through the wax. This is called a thread conditioner. Again, wax works just fine, so whatever it is you've got. I'm going to get that tip, and then I'm also going to go through the rest of the thread. Again, this sort of coats the fibers and helps it go through the fabric more evenly. I'm just running all of this through. This is actually a little too long. This is an excellent example. It's helpful to get a piece of thread that's not so long that it starts tangling up on you and knotting. because That is super frustrating. Um, sometimes what people will do is also iron the thread after you put the wax in. That's actually another good choice. It helps really bond it in with the fibers. I'm just going over it with my fingers. If your fingers are warm enough, that should work just fine. Then I sort of flatten this. You can see it's a nice wide needle eye. The eye is the hole at the top of the needle. And I'm just poking them all through. Ta-da! If you haven't done this before, to put a knot at the end, this is one way. There are a ton of different ways. But I just do a wrap around my finger, poke the tail end through, And then snip off. For this, I'm kind of tucking the knot in between my layers, right? So I'm going inside of here, but not all the way through to the back. And then I sew down into past the hole and into the backing. Stab down, poke back up right next to my stitch. And then I repeat it. And then I keep repeating it. Um, this is sometimes called a satin stitch or a whip stitch whips because it whips around the edge satin I guess because it looks like satin I'm not sure but stitches that are just nice and tight and close to each other if you accidentally go a little further off and it's not quite so close don't worry about it because you can always go back and fill in that gap 
you see what I mean is that you can start covering the edges of the hole and then I am bonding it to the back all the way around If you want to, you can keep that very even, all of the stitches. With mine, the fraying on this hole is kind of uneven, and I don't mind having it be a little bit off. It's a little more starburst shape. It's kind of done. It's kind of fun. I will actually just cover everything up. So again, you can use any kinds of thread that you like. Um, plain embroidery thread works great. Usually if I'm doing that, I will take the, th the uh, fibers and pull them apart. Let me show you what I mean with another piece of embroidery floss. Here's a piece of embroidery floss. You can see all the twists, just like the way the sashiko thread is made. Typically these are made with six different strands of fibers twisted together to make your thread. I may not want it to be that thick. So if I pull it apart, like take three and three, I now have two pieces of thinner embroidery floss. And that's what I'll usually use to make this kind of mend. Uh, it's First off, it saves you some thread. You don't really need to have it be quite as thick. And also because it's a lot easier to thread through the eye of your needle. So if you don't have a real embroidery needle and you've got something that's got slightly smaller eye, that works way better. So Shiko tends to be a little bit finer, a little thinner, and it's not a problem. But it's also, you know, a little more expensive. So you don't necessarily have to do that. Do whatever works for you. Excuse me while I... Untangle other thread, notes to self. If you have extra thread nearby, maybe move it out of the way so it doesn't come and tangle up while you're stitching. that I am done with that, you can see how that variegated yarn changes slightly in color and goes all the way around. So once I'm at the end point, I can go back in, stab through. I also can see it even more clearly on the back. And I can knot it off. So I'm taking my needle and I'm going underneath a couple of those little boops of thread. Boop. It's a technical term. Then I'm making sure that that tail end stays out the way. With that loop, I am going through it with a needle and pulling tight. And I do that a couple more times. And then to make absolutely sure, after I've looped it, I will take this and go through the fabric once again trying to do that so that I'm not showing through to the outside this time. So just maybe underneath all these other loops of fabric, of thread and fabric. There. And snip it. Now, because I have extra floppy bits of fabric, I can trim this around. I'm using these pinking shears. You can see they've got little zigzags this, those zigzag blades help cut it so that those pieces might fray a little bit around there, but they're less likely to come apart. Sometimes if you just go right across on both sides, it can keep fraying much more readily. Right here at the waistband, it's going to be kind of uncomfortable to have a big floppy bit of extra fabric. You've already got the pockets. This is kind of a nice thing just to Keep it smoother, 
keep it out the way. So there it is, inside and outside. That is a porthole mend.